the big father, the Pope, has issued an edict um, this week speaking about the gender uh, problem and saying um, it's a no on gender ideology and on the uh, surgical transitioning for um, kids and others. And to me, this seems like just sort of the written down version of what he's been saying all along, but it does for once and for all answer the question of, is the Pope Catholic? The answer is yes, this Pope (laughs) is, as it turns out, Catholic. What do you make of it? Well, that's always been a rhetorical question, hasn't it? Is the Pope Catholic? (laughs) But in more recent years, it's been a genuine question. People have been quite concerned. So it's good to see him coming out with some sound doctrine and saying, let's talk about the dignity of human life. And that means talking about abortion, talking about end of life, but also about the trans issue, about the the idea that we are made in the image of God, imago Dei, and we cannot mutilate that image because that's mutilating the image of God himself that we were made in, the beauty that he designed us in. And so when on a few months ago, we saw the Pope busting a load of um, transsexuals into the Vatican to affirm them. And so it's good to see that actually that was just a mission outreach, probably, because what he said today or this week is that there is no such thing as trans. There's no such thing as changing gender or sex. And it's certainly not something that should be done to children because it's harmful and it goes against our very purpose. Yeah, and it's, 100%. And it's, also what, it's also what we've had a report released in the UK today called the Cass Report by uh, a woman called Hilary Cass, which is really damning about uh, the transgender issue and about um transitioning children we ourselves one of the other things i do is run a legal thing and we're taking the government to judicial review over over socially transitioning children in school but i think the best point that was made about transgenderism which i think is just satanism dressed up in nice words and rainbow flags is that um is what graham linehan said which is is you can't if you tell a child that they're born in the wrong body they'll believe you because they're a child I mean, okay. the Catholic teaching is clear that we are a body and we are a soul. So you can no longer be in the wrong body as you can be in the wrong soul. It's a logical fallacy. It doesn't make any sense. So for people to affirm that is affirming lunacy, really and truly. Okay. Um, sorry, I had somebody in my ear. But I want to talk about the cast report because this is big. And in some areas, the UK sees reason and light before we do. In some areas, they don't. But I would say they're ahead of us on recognizing the truth about transing kids and giving kids medicines, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and so on. This is big, where now the New York Times headline is England limits youth gender medications, part of big shift in Europe, uh, reporting that the National Health Service in England started restricting gender treatments for children this month, making it the fifth European country to limit the medications because of a lack of evidence of their benefits and concern about long-term harms. Uh, citing England's uh, Dr. Hilary Cass, an independent pediatrician, saying for most young people, a medical pathway will not be the best way to manage their gender-related distress. The NHS will no longer offer drugs that block puberty, except for those involved in clinical research, and recommending that hormones like testosterone and estrogen be prescribed to minors only with extreme caution. This follows the path that Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark have all taken, you know, who's not taken that or even sniffed around it? America. The American Academy of Pediatrics is still reaffirming its endorsement of such care, and I use that term in quotes, stating that hormonal treatments are essential. They're essential for these confused kids, which just, I mean, to me, is evil. This is evil what they're doing. Yeah, and this cast report is interesting because she's not saying actually puberty blockers are good or puberty blockers are bad. She's saying there's not enough research on either side. And if there's not enough evidence on either side of that debate, we shouldn't be giving these things to children. I think that's a, that's a good starting point. But where we need to end up with is that actually these are the very, very same drugs that Americans are giving to pedophiles in chemical castration. Therefore, why are we ever giving them to children and saying it's a medicine? It's just abhorrent, isn't it? It, it is. And, and what they're doing... But what, what's so great about this is it's now sparking the next level of discussion, which is what else is happening in schools? What these third-party providers that they're called, you know, they're, they're in British schools, instead of go, having a national curriculum where we teach, you know, kids about uh, gender dysphoria or other imagined, made-up madnesses, um, you bring in third-party providers like Stonewall, who uh, were, did great work in in 
bringing about equality for homosexuals back in the day but they now now that they've solved that problem they've had to come on to the transing of the kids and Alison Bailey who's a very important barrister in the UK has been brilliant in saying we now need to turn around and look about uh, look at everything that our children are being taught because for the state to put its hand in to a family and to turn around and say I'm going to I'm going to let your child pretend to be something it's not behind the parents back is about the most egregious assault secular assault on on the sanctity of what a family is and a family is the most important thing that any of us are going to grow up in broken or mended you know the, that is the most important thing i'd say absolutely well i love to see the progress and i only hope and pray although we're working toward it as well that we follow because there's only so long the united states can ignore our closest friends behavior uh the you know the uk and all these other countries you know the scandinavian countries and others who are doing real testing on whether these treatments help the answer has been no and actually might hurt I mean, they were talking about cancer, about some of these puberty blockers actually raising the risk of cancer, these so-called harmless puberty blockers that are just, it's just a pause. You know, it's just a pause. Um, you, they're not telling parents you're increasing your child's risk of dying of cancer. I mean, that's not a pause. That's a permanent life sentence. It's uh, it, that some of the parents that we're dealing with in this judicial review, that if you listen to some of their testimony, which I have, it's absolutely heartbreaking because most parents really, really, really want their kids to grow up as tolerant and genuinely inclusive people. And they want people, they want their kids to understand that, you know, racism is bad and homophobia is bad and all this stuff. And they just missed out the tea bit. And they thought that their kids were being taught about, you know, genuinely including people in a genuine way, not in this woke way, which means excluding people. And what they've found is that they, they, they're they now, one of the parents we're dealing with, his son is due to be castrated in May. Oh, and it's bad. just listening to her speaking about her own son and how guilty she feels about it. So I would go one step further than there is no evidence that, you know, any of this stuff was... I don't think it's up for discussion. I'm in the Michael Knowles category of looking at um, the position we're in, which is that it's a, it's a real evil and it needs mm. to be undone in the same way that Mengele's work needed to be undone. Yeah. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers... The IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, they can help you. Even if you have the means to pay or if you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.